Okay, so maybe I lied. In the last video, I said in this video we were going to be talking about some locations and how to choose them, but I had a much better idea. And instead, this video will be talking about how to make a movie poster. After the reveal of the new Oppenheimer movie poster, I was inspired to start creating some of my own. And this so happened to align with the reveal of the next few Marvel movies that Marvel is working on. Now, I'm no expert at Photoshop, however, I do understand themes and characters. Therefore, I did some research on Marvel movie posters to gain an understanding of the themes that they use in their posters. This video by Vanity Fair was very useful in outlining what was successful and unsuccessful with Marvel movie posters. Therefore, in the poster that I create, I will be attempting to use the same colour scheme as the Guardians of the Galaxy poster, as James Verde Soto found this poster to be the most eye-catching. As you can see here, the movie poster is very vibrant and James continues to say how successful it was in showing all of the main characters, as well as the type of font that you want to use to help the audience understand the time period that your film is set in. After watching that video, I found a common theme of Marvel's movie posters. Over time, they've developed to have more and more characters in them and create the universe that they're present in. However, as always, I want to add my own spin onto the movie poster, and therefore, when I come to create my own in this video, I will be thinking about what means the most to me in terms of story and character. If I want to add my own spin to the movie poster, then it is important that I educate myself about all the options that there are. For example, this website talks about 17 different types of movie poster. Some of them, like Mylard, don't really apply to the movie poster that I want to create because it isn't in the typical Marvel Universe style. The teaser or advanced poster is a good option as I really like this Star Wars Rise of Skywalker poster because I really like the out of this world aesthetic and the opposing colour themes. This heads in the sky theme is kind of successful because you can show your main character as well as all of the secondary characters in the same poster. However, this is almost in the typical Marvel style and I'd much rather focus on one main character rather than a group of 10 to 12 people that you can't see the faces of. I'm not really a fan of double-sided style posters or the through the legs poster. This from the back with weaponry has been used by Marvel before and could possibly be an option for the poster I'm about to create. Back to back posters are great at showing romance, however Marvel sort of seems to steer away from romance in their movies and it's often just a subtext. Therefore, for an idea for a movie poster, I don't think they'd ever use this option. Lenticular posters are quite cool as they give off a 3D effect, which might be interesting to explore. Big text on faces could also be successful as it's been used in Thor before. However, I'd like to see more of the background and the universe that the story is told in. The big eye poster might be something interesting to explore. However, since I'm not that good at Photoshop, it would be hard to make sure the image finishes at high quality. Re-released posters are obviously for films that have already been released, and since the film I'm going to create a poster for hasn't been released yet, it'd be silly to try and attempt a re-release poster. Running for their lives posters are a little bit cliche, because from the trailer we already know that someone's running from something, and I think the poster needs to add a little bit more to the character. Female in a red dress definitely doesn't apply to the film I'm about to create a poster for, so we'll be steering clear of this one. Blue themed posters, I think, are the best type of poster, because the colour really creates a sort of glooming atmosphere that can overshadow a multitude of genres. The in bed poster is definitely something for a comedy, and since the film isn't a comedy, we won't be looking at this one. It'd be difficult to create a rolled or folded poster, since I am only doing this in Photoshop and won't be printing it out. Finally, a review poster is great because it can give the audience a sense of how good the film is before it's been fully released in cinemas. However, yet again, since the film hasn't been released, we won't be looking at this one. The film that I'm going to be exploring in this video will be Avengers The Kang Dynasty. I want to explore this as a movie poster because I feel like I have a good understanding of the character and want to test my Photoshop abilities. There is also a great number of images and resources that I can use to understand the story of this film further before its release. As you can see from this image, it is likely that Kang will be attempting to destroy Earth in this film. 
which is why when I create my movie poster, it will be set in outer space and have some sort of doom aesthetic. Here is an example of a poster someone's already tried to make. However, I don't think it's that successful because I find the number of streaking blue lines a bit unsatisfying to the eye. Here is a glimpse at a comic book page from the Kang comics, and it'd be awesome if the final film turned out like this. In this comic book slide, Kang seems to have an abundance of power, which will be interesting to see in the film, and it'll also be interesting to see the fans' opinions after the film's been released. Now lucky for me, we have already seen Kang the Conqueror at the end of Loki Season 1, therefore we have a face that we can use in the movie poster. However, after scrolling through some images of Kang on Google, I found this fan-created comic book style character who I think would be perfect to add to the movie poster. I also think it's likely that there is a frame from Loki Season 1 that I can use with this actor's face on, but it's also hard to ignore this photoshopped image of that actor's face inside the comic book Kang's uniform. Finally, I'll be using this Wikipedia summary of the Kang Dynasty comics to aid in the progression of my movie poster. Now, I'm sure there are a few spoilers in here, however, as we've already learned from Marvel movies in the past, they tend to stray from the plot lines slightly to keep the fans entertained. And now, with all that research complete, I'll bring all my images into Photoshop and show you my thought process when creating my very first movie poster. So after about an hour of collecting some images that I wanted to use for my movie poster, I opened up Photoshop and started off by creating this sort of star background along with the Avengers logo as sort of a base for my poster because I knew that this is what most of Marvel's movie posters use and look like. Um, now as I mentioned before, I am definitely a Photoshop novice and very new to this, so I had to watch a couple of tutorials about how to remove backgrounds efficiently and effectively. However, I think I did a good job on Vision and Kang here. As you can see, I'm able to use the Select and Mask option to smooth out and um, sort of add some contrast to the edges that I create. Um, my initial ideas for this poster was to sort of use this window that we see in Loki Season 1, as well as Kang, Vision and some other Avengers, um, just sort of creating a classic Marvel poster. Um, so as you can see here, I've, I've sort of cut out the earth with this nice lens flare and you'll notice that it's over Europe and this is because after reading that Wikipedia summary, I found out that this film is most likely going to take place in Europe. Um, so I just thought I'd hint at that in the poster. Now, at this point in the edit, I realized that I was getting quite a few error messages um, whilst trying to load in some of my images into Photoshop, which really threw my sort of um, thought process and and sort of time planning as well. In total, this took about like two hours to come up with a few poster ideas. Um, but what you'll see I'm doing here is I'm just trying to remove and feather out the background of this timeline that's also from the Loki series. And I'm, I'm trying to use a lot of images from places that we've already seen before, as these are the things that are most likely to appear in Avengers The Kang Dynasty when it's released. And I also really like the sort of blues and purples that you can see in the timeline picture. Um, here I'm adding Pepper as Iron Man because I thought it would either be her or the new Iron Fist character in this film. As I've seen from some of the comic images on Google that um, there is an Iron Man present. But obviously we know that Tony Stark has died already um, so it's likely to be one of his predecessors. Now here I'm trying to cut out and enlarge the Scarlet Centurion, who I believe is Kang's son, um, spoiler warning, um, but is sort of a, a main villain as well as Kang in the Kang Dynasty comics. So I thought it'd be sort of useful to have two figures sort of overlooking the heroes in this poster. Now here you can see I'm actually Googling how to use the blur tool because I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. You know, I selected the blur tool, I selected like the hardness and the width of the brush, but it just didn't really seem to be doing anything that I wanted it to do, so I gave up on that. But it's all about learning, so I continued to push on and try and find some uh, new images that I could use uh, because my previous ones weren't working. 
Now here I'm sort of looking for some more space photos because the earth that I had, as you can see, it's cut off at the bottom and I wasn't a fan of having a flat edge. So I opted to just use a circle brush and just sort of select uh, a circular earth of Europe. Now here I'm actually moving on to a second design because I wasn't too happy with the first one. I didn't think it had much going on. Um, it really wasn't that interesting. And in this second idea, I'm sort of taking inspiration from that Captain Marvel poster um, just because I believe Kang is a sort of out, out of world character. And I think since he's trying to conquer Earth, most likely, I wanted him sort of looming over Earth. And as you can see, I've used Europe again just to sort of hint at the area that this film will be taking place in. Um, after figuring out how to add a blue glow, um, I think that really added to um, this poster. It just sort of makes it feel a bit more complete rather than having a hard like cut edge. Um, and yeah, we're coming to the end of the poster here, so I will join you in a second to talk about the finished product. Okay, now yes, my Photoshop skills are bad, but I'm sure there are some good things to do with my posters. So this first poster, um, I did want to have the heroes in it, but after all of my files sort of weren't really working, I ended up just deleting them and focusing on Kang and the Scarlet Centurion, as well as the timeline in the background. Now this poster isn't very good because the background isn't really interesting at all. There's not really an atmosphere to it. Unlike my second design, which sort of has a bit more color variation. Kang has a glow around him, which sort of adds to, adds to the whole atmosphere. Um, and the glow color sort of matching the color of the earth also sort of, sort of symbolizes that he's trying to take over it. Whereas in the first one, it just sort of looks like he's holding the earth. Um, it's not very successful in sort of demonstrating what he's trying to do with her. Um, but in this process, I started off just by sort of listing out all of the different ideas that I had and people that I could include in the poster, which was really successful because when I went to collect images, I was able to use this list of research that I'd done before to sort of give myself a heads up and sort of inspired me because I knew what characters I could include in the poster. So finally, thank you for watching this video and I hope to continue to explore using Photoshop in the future and get better at it. Um, I've definitely learned a lot about the different types of posters that I could create and I'm sure that as my skills with Photoshop improve, I'll be able to draw on my creative ideas more to create some successful posters. One tip that I would give to anyone aiming to make their own movie poster is to definitely choose a style from the offset and don't just try and include all of your characters at once. Now I know that the Marvel aesthetic does usually have lots of characters, however it was much easier for me to focus on one character looming over the planet they were about to overtake, rather than trying to create some sort of face off between the heroes and the villains. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you've learned a thing or two about how to create your own movie poster.